Science Club earlier today for the year. And I took the new School of Sciences majors that it's going to be called up and do. And said, okay. And they have the student population for it. I plug those titles into those programs into the job search I have. Right. Right. And some are, are pretty much what I expected. Operations research that set up a new job. Um, uh, 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 data science, 6,000. So, data science is huge. They have a lot of Game design, one of their largest programs. What? No. What yeah. so, I mean, busy. <laughs> it's <laughs> not sure. Yeah. So game design at Fairfax, I guess, if it has to be such a rally of voice you know, quest or some work. Yeah. 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 No, it isn't the like professor. I need it isn't a faculty member in the game design. It would be if I looked in Prince William County, because that's where the main application's not I guess so. I guess a lot of the guys are not doing the game design when they get out. I saw my name or something. Or they're moving. Or they're moving. No, Dick Troy Rock. So you have to have a good idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 And maybe they'll do something well, else. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to apply to one visiting so position for a simple reason that it's in Baltimore. I yeah. am standing up that soon. I wouldn't say it would be a good for a visiting position, but if I stay with my own, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Um, that's, that's, uh, and the visiting position is in the visiting position for a visiting position. So if you've been focusing mostly on the other facts or something like that. So the biggest program oh, in the United States is the Analytic Engineering Program, right? That's in the ball now. So we'll be moving to school at the school at the school. Um, there's 407 graduates at the graduate school. So, for example, before you were doing classes, there's also no programs for this. There are several different areas Interesting guy comes in. Oh, well, yeah, right. That's been the issue. The fact that the functionality changes and it changes in ways that are not independent with respect to time. That's a big issue. Multi discipline. Or the news badge that was around last year, that was pushing last year, and like nature and science and the top journals of the top universities. Trend or just trust me. We don't know what to do with this guy. Trend. What does that mean? It's when two things combine to create something that's a lot of data so you can do it kind of smarter. It's like, isn't that just into this? We're going to have data now. We're going to have to measure the Okay. No, no, we don't do it. You guys got to do your own. Basically, yeah. Um, I'm my first experience as a manager of a tiny university. So I'm the best. I was probably the thing is contagious two weeks before you get a fever. They're already picking up on you. They're already talking about that. They have a good job. Because you can talk about past. Good work. 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 She's 
the way the world works. Uh, and others always yeah. an encore yeah. for yeah. 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 people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and so far. I mean, you have to get your and that's like the whole stuff is coming. But now, I love the winds of creative expression, like the real money will will sweep around them and not hire their their homes. And people will you might as well look at it in trash. All the culture, all that I, I want to present to everyone uh, some of the most remarkable undergraduates we have here at Computational and Data Science. Uh, they did a lot of work over the last semester in uh, a new course that I put together called um, Publishing, or something like you know Undergraduate Project for Publishing. I don't, don't even remember, CS 491. Uh, so they're here to present on Valentine's Day uh, a model and uh, the Simulations, agent based simulations that go along with it, and the topic of the day will be about dating, which I think everyone can enjoy or lament. I don't know, <laughs> defend it. So, um, whenever you guys are ready. Yeah, so, um, like Dr. Shi mentioned, uh, with this help last semester, uh, we built two models. Uh, each of the models uh, were built to simulate um, dating applications, each with their varying levels of multiplicity. And uh, in other words, uh, we built one model and it was built to simulate one dating application uh, with less functions and less rule sets and one and the other one was built uh, to simulate it with more. Um, and uh, the, the idea behind it was to compare uh, a simple dating app like Tinder to one that was more complex uh, like OkCupid that has more functionality. Um, so uh, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, you go. So we picked this topic uh, in part because of the growing um, popularity of uh, these online dating applications. Um, uh, online dating has become one of the most popular ways for singles to meet uh, other singles um, with uh, 15 of the most popular dating applications uh, acquiring over 247 million downloads in 2018 uh, alone. Um, it allows uh, singles to meet with uh, more potential significant others to, than uh, compared to like a traditional setting, you know, like a bar or social gathering. Um, it's a convenient alternative uh, for people who might have a smaller network of single friends, um, for people who are too busy to go to these social gatherings, or in my case, people who are too tired of, of who are tired of uh, getting rejected in person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, like, uh, it, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't too far up. It wasn't too far in the past where um, dating applications were were frowned upon. You were deemed as kind of desperate uh, for using some of these services. But that's not the case anymore. Um, you know, like uh, there's a lot less stigma associated with these dating applications, and uh, what started out as uh, someone's embarrassing little secret has uh, grown into a 2.1 billion dollar industry. Um, and there's a lot of application as far as uh, the data science uh, domain um, because these interactions all happen, uh, ha all start out on these applications. Uh, you can collect data, you can use it for network analysis, um, you start to quantify some of these social interactions, uh, or in our case, um, agent-based modeling. And um, one way our experiment could be used uh, would be if you were a stakeholder in one of these dating applications, uh, if you were a stakeholder in one of these companies and you wanted to see <coughs> if um, whether adding or <coughs> taking away some of these functionalities would result in a better or worse experience for the user. So is the stigma gone? No, I'm, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would hope so. I have, I have a couple of accounts. <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, in our models, we didn't include any attributes to go into the quality of the actual real life 
uh, dates that would come as a result of people, you know, users using these dating sites. But uh, if anyone would be willing to go out and get some qualitative data for us on those, <laughs> on those dates and get it back to us, you know, we'd be happy to make another model. Well, yeah, and like uh, like Steven said earlier, uh, that we had a lot of motivation for this project, but I think our main motivation was Steven's love life because it, it's not <laughs> it's not so great, <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't get we didn't get great results on that, but <laughs> we'll get results up later. Uh, it's good science. <laughs> Doesn't solve anybody's problem, but we got great insights. <laughs> so the primary um, social principle that we considered for our model was the idea of homophily. And homophily basically is that personal relations, people's personal relationships are homogenous to their um, socio-behavioral and interpersonal as well as their um, social um, characteristics. And basically means that people like those who are like themselves. Um, Mi um, Miller McPherson said, um, um, similarity breeds connection um, in his paper, Birds of a Feather, um, Homophily and Social Networks. Um, so we incorporated homophily in regards to ethnicity as well as physical attractiveness. Um, people who were more similar in regards to physical attractiveness or had the same ethnicity um, had a higher likelihood of generating a like. Um, in regards to gender behavior, we noted in different research papers that there are different um, across males versus females. Um, so males preferred um, women who were of a younger age than themselves. And we also noted that males had a higher value for physical attractiveness as opposed to females. Um, in contrast, females um, valued ethnicity, having someone that was of the same ethnicity more than males did and they also preferred males of a older age versus males of a younger age. So we incorporated that into our models. Now, before um, Colin goes into detail about the different levels of multiplicity, um, one thing to note is the primary distinction between level one and level two of the different multiplicities. Um, in level one, the agents are blind, which means that they do not know if the potential match that, they, that has appeared has liked them already or not. Um, and so the, the way they like is basically deciding if that said potential match has met their threshold or not. Um, and in doing so, they will realize that the person has liked them if the, if the match is generated. Um, they also don't have the function of generating a message with their like. Um, and that varies from multiplicity level two, <coughs> where you can see, the agent can see whether the person has liked them, has liked them with a message, or not liked them at all. And if the person has liked them or liked them with a message, the likelihood that they will like them um, increases accordingly. Um, also, they have the ability to message with their like. Okay, so here we have the diagram. It's basically gone through like uh, essentially what each agent's thinking as they get pulled out of the um, out of the dating network. So we have two different um, two different routes there. One's for males, another's for females. Uh, and so what first happens is first they evaluate the compatibility. It's a bit tough to read there, um, but all this does is evaluate compatibility. And it's just evaluating the compa ca compatibility based on what Fatma said earlier, attractiveness, ethnicity, and all the other attributes that we had. Um, and so um, essentially, it, uh, a, if, if a male's picked, then a uh, potential match would be a female, and the, compa the compatibility will be calculated, and then um, based on the compatibility score, you will go down um, two different trees. One is if uh, the person is, if you are compatible with that person, then you have a higher chance to like. If not, then you have a lower chance to like. Um, and so it's essentially the same with the female. Uh, however, uh, the only difference is are the, the probabilities are not um, are not the same because um, females are typically more selective than males. Uh, and then. If there's two mutual likes, then a match is made, uh, given by the heart right there. Okay, so this is, so what you saw earlier was multiplicity level one. This is multiplicity level two for just the female agent. So you can see how uh, much more um, complex it gets whenever you have a lot more, um, whenever you add uh, another level of multiplicity into the um, mechanics of the app. Uh, so. So essentially, the, the main difference is here is that 
uh, they're still do you're still doing the uh, ability score. However, you you see if the person's already liked you or not, and then if they have, you evaluate what type of like it was, whether it was a like with message or just a regular like, uh, which would just be like regular like is like a tender swipe. It's nothing uh, nothing fancy, um, uh, and this is for um, the OK Cupid part, uh, but. Um, so if you were liked with a message, then the uh, likelihood that you would like someone back is higher than if you were just liked by swiping, um, which, and then um, liked by swiping is higher than if you haven't been liked by the person at all. And here's, it's, uh, here it is for males. Uh, the difference here would be the probabilities here are different because as I said earlier, uh, the males are um, less selective than the females. Or, yeah less selective than the females. Um, so yeah. Is that right, Steve? Males are less selective than the females? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm just right all the time. <laughs> so for validation, our models went through um, intense validation, internal validation, and we conducted a bunch of right. extensive quality checks on our models amongst the different um, coders within our group. We also conducted a t-test to examine the, um, whether the expectations that we had for the models were met um, within the results. So we had um, we completed a thousand runs um, with a network size of 50 and we noted that um, all the different parameters did in fact satisfy the strict requirements that we had for this unique um, um, attributes themselves. For instance, here you have attractiveness, and for attractiveness, um, it was randomly uniform between zero and one. So as you can see here in level one, the mean was 0 0.5 to one, which is roughly about 0 0.5, which did satisfy what we expected, which did satisfy what we expected. Um, and same thing for attractiveness in model two. Um, and then for example, our minimum was 0 0.003, which is roughly zero. Um, which is what we anticipated, and the max was 0 0.999, which is roughly one. Um, for age, we had a minimum of 18 and 40, which was what we um, incorporated into our models. What about the cross correlation? Like, for example, attractiveness with age in the natural population versus the... Do you, did you, did you validate against actual data? No. It's a synthetic population, which I apologize, I did not no, mention. Did not. Okay. And um, as you see here, so uh, the means I want to point out, uh, they're representative of uh, the me the average, uh, the, the means for each individual uh, node in the simulation. So for uh, ML1, we see that we got a mean of uh, about four times as many likes sent out for, uh, as compared to uh, ML2. Um, dislikes, number of dislikes for ML2 are a little more than ML1, um, and dislikes and likes are complementary of each other. And we can see the same thing for the match count, where ML1 scored about four times as many uh, matches as uh, ML2. Okay, so here we did a pair of t-test of the to compare the means between multiplicity one and multiplicity two. Uh, so we can see that um, our p-value is significant for all of our different <laughs> um, actions. So our actions here is like, dislike, and then the heart obviously match, uh, and then the envelope for message. Uh, but so, so for likes, we can see that in ML1, on average, you had 17 more likes um, per node. Uh, each, And then um, for the dislikes, you had 15 less in ML1 per node than in uh, ML2. And then in the match, which is what we were uh, most concerned with, uh, you had about one, almost one more match per uh, per node on average, and uh, and then the messages was was as well higher in multiplicity level one than in multiplicity level two. So um, I'll I'll be mean and I'll say, can you tell me what that low p value actually tells you? Uh, it tells you whether the uh, means are different or not. Uh, or, well, if one's uh, higher than the other, as far as the means go. So that would be, you just described a one-sided p-test as opposed to a two-sided p-test, which you said in the earlier sentence. Um, so that's that's part of it, but you're testing on all hypotheses that they are not different. Right. And you, at that level, you've been able to reject that mode hypothesis. 
Right. Right. That's what the key test is. It yeah. doesn't show anything. You're just rejecting a null hypothesis, and 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 I'm, in science we can't prove it. So right. I, I find that oftentimes, as we <coughs> teach these courses, we don't really give the students that full set of sentences that they really need in order to express what they just got when they got a low p-value. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just as much academia's fault as, as, as you guys. So uh, I think uh, more. <laughs> yeah, probably more. Yeah. Probably more. So, so uh, uh, picking on your prop, but but uh, <laughs> but but that's uh, it's something we you should pay as you move through your academic career. You should pay attention to uh, getting those sentences out right because they often come out wrong. So, if you get a low p value, you get some significant results, just like you do. What does that actually tell you, mm -hmm. and then what that costs you to do? So. Right. Okay. So. Um, for these graphs, uh, we can, so what they are is the frequency of likes uh, for ML1 on the left side, frequency of likes for ML2 on the right side, and then at the bottom here, we have the frequency of matches for the respective multiplicities. Um, and so what's, uh, what we can note here is that they're both mouth shaped for both the females and the males in both. Um, the, uh, the multiplicity one does have a bit more of a, of a skew than on the right. We can also see that uh, the median of the females uh, is less than the median of the males in both. Uh, but what's important to, to know here whenever you're comparing the two multiplicity levels is the uh, scaling between the axes. So the number of likes sent out for the um, for multiplicity level two was much less than the likes sent out by multiplicity level one. Um, and, uh, and then going down to the matches, so um, one issue that we found sometimes is that some of our results were not exactly um, completely intuitive. So we had to look uh, a bit further and, and really analyze our, our, uh, our model to figure out why we're getting these results. So you, you'd expect for each number, the, the number of matches for the, the bars between the females and the males to match up past the zero, past, past Steven's bin over here. You'd expect them to match up over there. Um, <laughs> However, you can see that they, they really don't, um, and that there's more, that the, the males are just far higher. Um, and so, but the reason for that is because as you, as you see um, right here, this is two, and it would be about um, 20 here. So that whenever you, um, if you wanted to map that onto uh, over here, it would actually be scaling up much larger than what it looks over here. So that, so that was um, one challenge that we faced was our unintuitive results. Uh, but um, but looking a little bit further, we can see that um, the number of matches for um, uh, multiplicity level two didn't vary too much between uh, the males and females, um, ex unless you're talking about zero, but that was because uh, there's more males in our population than females, uh, because that's how it is in the real life dating apps, there's more males than females on those. Um, and, we, and what's also interesting is uh, the Multiplicity level two is, is far more skewed than multiplicity uh, level one, especially when you're looking at comparing the females. Yeah. Okay, so right here, uh, we can see that the dislikes, it's just a complement of the likes, so it's gonna be similar results there. Uh, and then the number of messages, we weren't, we're just, we weren't, um, we, were very, we, we didn't focus too much on the, um, the aspect of the messages, because the messages would go somewhere um, further with our model as far as quality of matches go, but we didn't really look into that. We were, mainly, we were focused on the likes and the matches. So to measure the weight of our variables, we couldn't just use OLS because in the network there were dependencies. Uh, for example, if node A uh, liked node B and node B liked node C, those were not independent observations, so we couldn't just use OLS, and instead we used MRCAP, which is Multiple Regression Quadratic Assignment Procedure, and so that creates uh, many random permutations of uh, the network, and then compares the coefficients of our own network to the coefficient of all those permutations. Uh, and OLS assumes that uh, the independent variables are Gaussian, and that the observations are Independent, and we don't know that those uh, that those assumptions hold for our network. So MRCAP makes some assumptions about these relationships. Uh, so to interpret uh, the density, for example, of the match network, which was our 
uh, dependent variable uh, is less dense than the network for the like network, which makes sense because in real life you're going to expect to see a lot more likes occur before you actually come up with a match. Um, but uh, MRCAP makes sure that the, the structure holds well, that it permutes differently the, uh, the uh, attributes of each node, but it keeps the structure the same. It's the same. Uh, so one other thing that's interesting about the EMR cap, uh, our results that we had, was that we found that um, we, we kept um, all aspects the same as far as um, how the attributes uh, affect um, the compatibility score. However, we found that by the mechanics of the models that it was, that, um, it was different between, for example, ethnicity, between multiplicity one and multiplicity two, which was an interesting find. So here we have um, the network of, of the like networks for both uh, ML1 and ML2. Um, and as, as you can see, um, even though ML the the network for ML2 is a lot more concentrated, they're both uh, random because the agents it, it's just a like sent out. The agents haven't actually interacted uh, with each other yet. So if we go to the next slide um, to the match network, we'll see that once these agents interact, then uh, then we'll start to see some structure. Um, more so in ML1, but there is some structure, there's some dyads and triads in ML2 as well. And this structure represents like the people that have matched um, in, in the center of that cluster there. And on the outside, uh, those are people that haven't gotten any matches, which is prob which would probably be where um, Colin uh, would be if he had <laughs> a Tinder account. <laughs> yeah? Why, why is there a gap between um, because this because uh, probably would be like where like it used to be random. Um, the, the the people that have uh, acquired matches um, they move to the center of the cluster. Just, just to make it easier to see. Right. Just to make it easier to see. One of our um, deductions was also given that there is more structure in multiplicity level one versus two. We said that um, since there are more pathways to generating a match in level two versus level one. Agents obviously have more to consider in level two. Um, for example, reciprocity. Um, the agent can, will like someone only if they like them. So that might be a reason why um, there's more concentration and there's more of a cluster in multiplicity multi level one versus level two. Um, so one of the biggest challenges that we faced was just lack of available data. Um, unfortunately, um, Match.com and other uh, dating app uh, companies, they don't their data isn't available uh, for public use, so we had to go, uh, our probabilities came from research articles. Uh, our models were also, running the models was also computationally expensive. Um, it took an ex extensive amount of time to run it, and we weren't able to run it um, in the network size that we wanted to, given that our computers were not able to handle it. And then even after all the time that we spent running simulations, like it took a long time sometimes for us to even like, understand our own results Thanks. And I think I think the biggest challenge for me was trying to convince my girlfriend that downloading Tinder was for science. She, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't seem to buy it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't easy. So you haven't talked about what you did this. You're doing this on laptops, right? Yeah. And and what language were you working in? Python. Um. So for next steps, um, is. One of them is multiplicity level three, <coughs> which we did start on, but we were never able to um, incorporate in our research paper because there was a lot of debugging that had to occur. Um, also, we were um, considering finding a way to assess the quality of a match. Now we know that there is substantially more matches in level one versus level two, but is there a way for us to determine whether the match itself is good or is meaningful um, in level one versus level two? Um, also adding more attributes. Um, so we consider physical attractiveness as well as age differences and ethnicity um, in our model, but adding something like education level um, as, well, as well as income um, into our model um, and see how that affects uh, our gen generating a match itself. Yeah, um, and for our conclusion, um, our results did support our hypothesis that um, given that 
Multiplicity level two had more pathways to generating a mass than level um, one. Asians had to consider more things in level two versus level one. And our results showed that um, in doing so, there were some social um, effects that were transformed in level one versus level two. Um, so, yeah. What exactly is multiplicity level three? Okay, so multiplicity level three would be so we had um, multiplicity one is tender and two is okay cupid, mm -hmm. right? So number three would be something like plenty of fish, where you can do just about anything. Like you can search people up, you can uh, you can comment on a specific part of their profile. Um, so th it would just be more actions that the agents could do. So you saw in the diagrams where uh, in level one it was, it was a really small diagram, level two it was far larger, and level three would, would I, I wouldn't be able to film this presentation probably. Okay. But, uh, yes. there, are, there are dating sites that have things like currency, where you can spend currency to have like a larger option. Yeah, coffee meets bagel. Okay. Coffee meets bagel is an example of that. So what we were incorporating was, for example, every agent starts with a thousand coins, um, and depending on whether they use the search engine or not, if they use the search engine and filter out like the attributes that they desire in a potential match, and they do find a like that way, then the number of coins that they have will reduce. And they won't be able to use the search engine again if they have absolutely no coins. So, yeah. How do they get coins? Oh, yeah. The real coins. Yeah. <laughs> Did you start this with any uh, motivating questions? That was there something that you uh, wanted to learn that uh, led you to do the programming in this particular manner? Um, so I think I think whenever we were first starting, uh, we listed out a couple of ideas, uh, and I think the dating app one kind of st stuck, and we wanted to see uh, the different levels of multiplicity between the apps and how that would affect the amount of matches, the amount of likes. And we want to look into that. Um, when you say amount, what does the amount signify? What does that mean to you? That there's a more matches. I mean, what, is, what, what, is the, what does that mean that there's a match? So a match would, uh, I'm not sure if I'm quite understanding your question. Oh, so um, you say that, there's such a thing as a match. Does a match mean that then they go into another level of communication, or right. what happens when a match happens? So when a match is made, that's whenever they can start sending messages to um, to, to other people that they've matched with, mm -hmm. and um, and then the match is generated from uh, the the uh, the the, uh, the liking principle. But like one of the things we did consider. Um, as one of our potential questions was, does the degree, um, or does the level of multiplicity, um, how does the level of multiplicity affect the quality of a match? But um, going through the project, uh, we kind of had to like, um, sub we kind of had to aim lower when it comes to the goals of our project because it's so extensive and there's a lot of things to consider. There's like different <coughs> types of social phenomena that you have to consider when developing these types of programs. So, although that was like our initial goal at the beginning, um, as we move forward with the project, we kind of had to like lower our expectations of what we can do for this project, which I think happens to a lot of people when they're doing research. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the story of every academic paper. <laughs> um, could you guys explain that third bullet? Because I'm having a hard time processing it. Adding more pathways to generate a match. That would be within one multiplicity level, or <coughs> must be across two. multiplicity levels from from level one to level two. So level one has a limited amount of pathways, and when we added more pathways um, in level two, we saw that the, for example, if you go to the okay, so that's that's a bullet about comparing level one with level two. Yeah. So you didn't actually it's not add. add. You, you didn't conduct an experiment where you added more pathways. You conducted an experiment where you had. 
a limited number of pathways yeah. and more pathways. Exactly. Right. Okay. And we saw that. Um, that well, then why is it different than the other? Because the other bullets pretty much said the same thing, right? What's <coughs> different between M1 and M2? Um, so for M1 and M2 here, uh, back whenever we were looking at the MR cap, how we saw that um, the different attributes. Uh, so yeah, thank you. So we can so um, we can see here that um, ethnicity is whatever uh, it's 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 whenever it's the same here, which is generated by the 0.98. Um, it's just more no, like the one second. Yeah. What's the fundamental difference in the mechanics of the model? between M1 and M2. There's one fundamental difference. What is that? You can see the type of light. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah. The potential for reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now talk about the effects. Uh, of the model? Yeah. No, so that's your for example, right. Now talk about MR cap effect. For example, in attractiveness, you see that the coefficient here um, has a degree of magnitude of five as opposed <coughs> to four here. So this means that basically um, in level two, uh, attractiveness carried more weight um, in level two versus level one, which is what we were talking about, for example, of when we're talking about transformation of social effects. Um, also, we noted that um, um, in level one, um, some attributes um, you could think you could consider them to be more of a driving force in level one than level two, and that's because um, in level one, you can't you. Your only option is to swipe, and you're kind of going, the agents are going in it blind. Um, as opposed to level two, they have more things to consider. So um, they can they have a lot more flexibility, which is why there isn't like a key feature that's a driving force, besides obviously a, a light, which is a given. What are the units of these? There is it 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 6, right? So they're, they're not standardized, so they're different for each um, variable. So for the, the coefficient for likes is for likes, and the coefficient for attractiveness is so for... So these are coefficients yeah. of, a, of, a, regression. of a, essentially a linear regression. Okay. So a bigger coefficient would imply it contributes more to the response variable. Right? Yeah. What was the response variable? Probability of the likes? It was the match network. Match network. Match network. But it has to have likes. Starts with like. So then your response variable Boolean? Like or not? No, no number. Number, number of likes. That's the quantity of matches. Right. Uh, the example, one of the examples of the multiple for number two is a big agent. Um, and so the, the, the agents weren't allowed to message each other for the agents. And they mutually like each other? No, if they want to send out a like, they can also send a message with that like. As opposed to in Tinder, for example, you either swipe right for a like or swipe left for a dislike. So, um, these websites say, a lot of the websites say, and the research shows that um, when you send out a message with your life, like you say, hey, you try to connect with them in some way, I don't know, <laughs> um, there's more likelihood that the person that you liked will um, like you back. So let's uh, let's real quick here. Uh, what what would be the main? Uh, we saw your conclusions. What would be the main lesson learned here? Let's say I wanted to go out and I wanted to find love, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What can you guys teach me? Having experienced having experienced this model, what would that, what advice would you give me now that I'm about to go download an app and start matching? So what did you learn, Steve? We mentioned we don't have quality of, of, of yeah, matches. Okay. Right. So if all we were going to do is look at a number, it's a yeah, I'm on Tinder. So if I if because because you're going to get more matches. Okay. Whether they're better or not is 
Yeah. And you get more nice. access from Tinder because what feature does that? Because more? there, uh, there's actually less to consider. There's less to consider. And yeah. so you just look at the picture and you're like, examine. Does this person meet my threshold? Whatever that threshold is for said person. And given that they do meet it, they'll swipe right for you. So if I just have a good photo, like a really good photo. Okay. Somebody else's photo? <laughs> Somebody else's photo. Because, because I'm obviously I can't right? So, so if I had just a good photo and I didn't really want to, you know, maybe I didn't have a, a job or maybe I wasn't educated, whatever. Maybe I just, I have one good photo. Maybe I should get on Tinder because then I would just, yeah, there's less to consider and therefore I'll get more matches and that's it. And But if I had more than a photo, then maybe I want, what you're saying is part I want more quality matches, so maybe like whatever, okay, keep it or whatever. Maybe that's where I want to go because I want quality. But, but <clears throat> if it's selectivity, then it's the second one, uh -huh. and if it's not selectivity, it's the first one. So I would predict all the males are going to end up on the first one, and all the females are going to end up on the second. One. <laughs> Which, maybe that's why Tinder is the largest app in the world in terms of number of users. Yeah. Is there a difference in male-female ratio in Tinder as opposed to the other? You want to test my theory? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody post high Yeah. We know that there. We know that there's a. Well, the stat is like a few years old, but probably probably still not far from it, right? But there, the high proportion of males was higher. Hmm. Yeah. So I remember the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you all said this is like gender and, and OK Cupid, right? So uh, as, a, as a person who just graduated, I know that a lot of people in college use Tinder. So I don't know, did you all account for like maybe the population differences and who's on Tinder compared to who's on OK Cupid? Because even in the same age yeah. rate, I know a lot of partiers use Tinder, but I don't know any of my frat friends who use OK Cupid, you know? So we didn't. And the reason being is because we wanted to compare the two levels of, of complex of multiplicity mm -hmm. and, and see exactly how that affected. Now that would be something to see how um, the different users' uh, users' behaviors on their apps specifically to those apps. We could look at that. That would be like another like another research question in the future. But uh, we were mainly focused on like the different levels of multiplicity and, and how that um, how that affected the match count, keeping everything else constant. Yeah, and another thing that we were considering um, for the future is also adding like long-term versus short-term goals for the Asians. And so even within a specific gender, um, like I said, the ethnicity carries a lot of weight for females, um, and as opposed to physical attractiveness, for instance. Um, but in one of the papers, they noted that physical, if, they're, if the female is looking for a short-term um, relationship, the rate of physical attractiveness goes up uh, um, as opposed to if the ladies or the, the female agent is looking for a long-term relationship and so things like social status and income level for the potential agent goes up. So some years ago uh, OK Cupid published the analysis of a lot of their matches with some kind of surprising results. Can you even compare your Distributions to the distribution rate. I don't know how useful. I mean, because that you know they only really published like broad summaries, and not, none of the methodology or underlying data. So I don't know how useful that would be. But right. Um, so when we were looking, look like looking it up first, <coughs> trying to figure out the, the behavior of our agents and how to encode that in, we we saw that. But since it didn't have the useful information uh, for us for our model, we didn't really go forward with that. Um, we could compare it now, but after the fact we didn't we didn't look at it again, but we could compare it I guess now. I don't I don't know if I'm remembering the same results that you looked at, but I, I remember seeing some charts from OkCupid that were distributions of uh, ethnicity preferences. Yeah, and then age preferences. So I mean you mentioned that the behaviors you encoded were that uh, men prefer slightly young women and women prefer slightly older men. But if I remember the OK Cupid uh, findings, they found that women, young women prefer slightly older men, and then older women prefer slightly younger men by a few years each. Correct. But men, no matter what the age of the man, prefer 18 years. 
<laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what the analysis behind this was, but they, were, you know, tried writing this this blog post for OJT with this sort of flabbergasted by just how clear this trend was. Um, and I don't know if you found like similar stuff in the analysis. The, the, the rules, the rules that we put into for these different sets were static for all the same cases. And we we got those from a different. Uh, yeah, we got those from varying like social research papers. The, the highest score that a female node would have for age difference was if the female was 3.996 years younger than the male. That would give them the highest age difference appeal to the male. Whereas for for females looking at males, the male would have the highest uh, age difference appeal if the male was about two point some small bit of change years older than the woman, female node. Those were from, as you said, though. Yeah, yeah. and we got that from a research paper. From peer review. Yeah. Was it part of the expectation that you might get access to a, to a dating website? That is there hopes that you could have done? You wouldn't have been able to, to, to work with that if you had it, right? And There's a lot of ethical dilemmas with that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty tight. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs>